Hey there, Canaanites. It's been a while since the last video, something I am sorry about, but an explanation for that will have to wait. For today, we're talking about Halo The Rise of Atriox, Issue 3. This issue follows Decimus as he searches for a Kegar scientist named Sigran in hopes of helping out the newly emerged Banished. The issue was written by John Jackson Miller, who now has a fairly solid record when it comes to Halo contributions. He wrote Defender of the Storm for Halo Fractures, a damn good story by most accounts, and Undefeated for Halo Tales from Slipspace, one of, if not the best story in the anthology. Rise of Atriox Issue 3 is illustrated by Jonathan Wayshack, who illustrated On the Brink in Halo Tales from Slipspace, the Blue Team story. While that story was absolutely terrible, the art was actually pretty damn good, so it's nice to see Mr. Wayshack get the opportunity to illustrate a much, much better Halo story. And yes, if it wasn't clear enough by now, this issue was another solid story. The only major negative I've really had so far with these comics is, let's be honest, they should have released prior to Halo Wars 2. But anyway, let's dive in and explore The Rise of Atriox, Issue 3. Our story starts with Atriox, Decimus, and some other Gerald Hane on the bridge of a CCS-class battlecruiser preparing to leave a system after a salvage mission. As a brief side note, I love how they use the same bridge design seen in the Truth and Reconciliation in Halo CE. It's also interesting to note that we can see on Atriox's face the start of the tattoo or war paint design that he sports in Halo Wars 2. Anyway, as the ship's engines are activated, multiple hull breaches appear on multiple decks, including one on the bridge. Atriox, in response, throws the one Gerald Hane with a vacuum suit on at the breach, sealing it for the moment. Atriox orders Decimus to get a new engineer that he'd recruited recently to seal the breaches, only for Decimus to reveal that the Gerald Hane in the vacuum suit was that engineer. Finding him still alive, Atriox kills the brute, declaring him either a saboteur or incompetent. Atriox then orders Decimus to find a new engineer. This leads us into the main story as Decimus brings a group of Gerald Hanai to the planet of Otrak, a secret Covenant world to find the Kegyar scientist known as Sigron. Just as they find the Covenant outpost, a group of Ungoi attack. Suddenly Sigron appears as a hologram, calling off the attack when she sees it as Decimus, who stands at her doorstep. As it turns out, it seems that at some point in the past, Decimus faked his death or was reported dead, and that Sigron fought alongside him. I really hope we get those details someday. And while we're talking about Sig, she interestingly wears a modified champion's armor set with some kind of enhanced eye. Whether this is a fully cybernetic eye or simply part of the armor is unknown. Anyway, Decimus explains that he and others broke their chains and left the Covenant under the leadership of Atriox. Interested, Sig invites the Gerald Hanai in. Inside, Decimus tries to convince her to join the Banished, but Sig seems unconvinced. She eventually shows Decimus her latest project, a fully controlled army of Yan Maya using a device that perfectly mimics the sonic and pheromonal signals used to control the buggers, Sigron, or whomever wields the device, is effectively the Queen of the Hive. Sig briefly shows off the capabilities of the device elevating herself high into the air before unleashing her army on the traitorous banished. But just as she does, Atriox appears, revealing that he sent Decimus ahead to see what Sig had in store. Now, with his Chainbreaker mace in hand, Atriox dives into the fray. Seeing Atriox fighting for them, for their freedom, Decimus and the other Gerald Hane are reinvigorated and charge into the battle once again. Eventually, only Sig remains. The Tavawan attempts to escape, but Decimus shoots down the Yan Maya carrying her and Sig falls to her death. After the battle, Decimus contemplates all that the Banished could achieve with the device Sig made, but Atriox instead destroys it. He states that none that join the Banished will be forced to do so, but would because they knew that Atriox would fight, to do whatever it takes, and that he would win. Basically, that his actions would inspire others to join. With that, the third issue comes to a close, and damn was it a good issue. We got an interesting look at the early struggles of the Banished, but more importantly, we saw exactly what kind of Gerald Hane Atriox is, and much like we saw in Hunting Party, we saw why those that follow Atriox have chosen to do so. A wonderful story with beautiful art to accompany it. The only criticism I can really level here is the very abrupt appearance of Atriox's Chainbreaker Gravity Mace. For a weapon as distinct as Atriox himself that, in many ways, is a reflection of his beliefs and basically the symbol of the Banished, look at it from above, it's literally the Banished symbol, it appears with no real buildup. There's certainly a moment of brief awe, or at least there was for me, but I was hoping we'd get some buildup. Personally, I had hoped that we would see Atriox starting with perhaps a modified gravity hammer, maybe even dual wielding it with the red energy sword he took from the Executioner when rebelling, eventually tinkering with it and building his own weapon. Then perhaps at some climax in issue 5, or maybe even at the very end, 
he unveils it, ready to lead his properly formed banished faction. Maybe that's outside the scope of such a short series, but it's what I personally would have liked, or even any build-up to its unveiling. But in the end, it's a fairly minor complaint against an overall great issue. Issue 4 of Rise of Atriox will see the introduction of Let Valir, the shipmaster from Halo Wars 2, and explore how and why he joined the Banished. The circumstances around this are hinted at in Halo Wars 2's Phoenix Logs, and I can't wait to see this realized in comic form. So, what did you think of this issue, the series so far, and are you excited for issue 4? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, this has been Halo Canon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you.